They might be most familiar to you from science fiction movies or perhaps as high-tech weapons in the skies over Iraq or Afghanistan. But over the next decade, expect to see drones coming to the skies near you. Vast sums are being spent on civilian drone projects and everything from police surveillance to amateur photography. In the United States, Congress has told the US airspace regulator to open up North America to drones by 2015. We could follow suit by the end of the decade, but are we for a world in which thousands of drones are patrolling our skies? Jim Reed reports. They are the eyes and ears of the armed forces. A decade ago, less than 5% of US military aircraft were unmanned. Now 40% have no pilot on board. Many think the Typhoon and the F-35 will be the last conventional fighters ever flown by the RAF. But the role of the drone is now changing. British skies are about to open up to thousands of civilian drones. Who is watching the drone operators? And how safe is this new technology? Next to the Army Training Zone on Salisbury Plain is a glimpse of how drones could be used in the future. It might not look much like the spy planes in Afghanistan or Yemen, but this is one of the first commercial uses of an unmanned aircraft in the UK itself. As the cost of sensors and digital cameras have come down, so new civilian applications are starting to become possible. 1,000 feet, 38 knots, 76 per cent. These lightweight drones fly by themselves using satellite tracking to glide from point to point. It's going to be taking many thousands of pictures, um, and those pictures, and we'll know the, the precise location of each one, so it's possible to pull those photographs together. The data is then analysed to find out how well crops are growing and if more fertiliser or pesticide is needed. This is high value, high technology stuff, and it's an industry this country could do with leading. It's a very exportable technology. If we're looking in the agricultural domain, for example, you can see scaling up for maybe some of the, uh, the, the plains and the big fields that you might have in Canada, for example. If you're looking at other areas of technology, we can be in construction, it can be in filming, it can be um, environmental monitoring. It's almost endless, the, the sorts of applications of real benefit and not intrusive and not invasive. Endless possibilities, maybe. But as small, lightweight drones get cheaper and more powerful, serious questions are being asked about surveillance and privacy. Police forces and the emergency services have been testing these small, helicopter-style drones for some time now, though there was a setback when police in Liverpool first flew theirs illegally without the right permission and then managed to crash the £13,000 device into the River Mersey. Still, Newsnight has seen this briefing document from the Association of Chief Police Officers, which sets out the precise technical specifications for these devices, the type of camera used, for example. And in a rather strange section of this document that reads more like a bad crime novel than a police briefing, it sets out how senior officers think these devices could be used in the future. The unmanned aerial system operator PC Ainge arrives at the junction of Prospect Avenue and Main Road. The area is extremely quiet and the only thing moving, other than a few cats, is PC Ainge. Weather conditions are good, cloud cover is high and light. The launch goes as planned. PC Ainge trains the camera on the rear of the target property and starts receiving live video. As the front door goes in, the suspect appears out of an upstairs window. He jumps over a number of fences into a nearby footpath. As the suspect is running, PC Ainge selects a flight mode that maintains a constant distance behind the suspect. The suspect emerges into an area of scrubland and is challenged and arrested by the dog handling unit. At the moment, anyone can fly a lightweight drone in the UK, 
if they can prove to the airspace regulator, the CAA, that they can do it safely. And that's got many privacy campaigners worried. Who is protecting the public's civil liberties and privacy? With a huge increase in the amount of private companies and institutions able to use uh, drones over uh, our heads, who is going to stop people from watching us on our own property and even our own homes? Um, the Civil Aviation Authority made it very clear that it's not within their remit. They don't have the authority or the resources to monitor what people are doing with drones. Their remit is solely concerned with safety. And with drones costing a fraction of the price of helicopters, the worry is the authorities will greatly extend the use of aerial surveillance. A small drone was used to film clashes last year at a political rally in Poland. But this wasn't controlled by the police. It was all filmed by a private company on the demonstrators' side of the street. It raises new questions about who will be watching who in the future. The real money, though, will not be in building small helicopters, but in selling larger, more powerful drones. Government agencies want them for border security and search and rescue. Bobby. And big freight firms to ship cargo long distances. With this in mind, Congress has told the US regulator to open up all domestic airspace to large drones by 2015. The UK won't be far behind. I don't think that the public is aware about how quickly this is going to be happening. We're talking uh, in the US that the skies will be open by 2015 and in the UK and Europe by 2020. So that's going to happen very quickly and I don't think the public is really aware of the changes that are going to happen. There is a real failure to have a proper discussion and proper debate about this. Very few parliamentarians, for instance, are talking about this. Here in the UK, there may have been little public discussion, but quietly and behind the scenes, a serious amount of public money is being spent. A consortium of large defence companies has been given £31 million to try and prove drones can safely share British skies with commercial jets, one of the largest grants of its type ever handed out. Another £20 million of taxpayers' money has been spent turning this old military base and the airspace around it into the largest drone test site in Europe. This is Aberporth on the west coast of Wales, home to the British Army's new Watchkeeper drone programme and the only airport in the UK where companies are allowed to test that kind of unmanned technology. The spy planes hidden away in the hangars here will eventually go to Afghanistan. But this place and the new technology park next to it was sold to the town as more than a military site. It was meant to bring in hundreds of high-tech jobs, testing the first generation of peaceful civilian drones. What I object to is the military use of this base uh, and the way it was sold to the public as a civilian exercise. The project has faced some fierce criticism from local residents. Jeremy Clulo made his feelings clear outside a recent public consultation to open up more airspace to drones. There are safety issues regarding drones, there are noise issues, but if, the, if the, in exchange for that we had hundreds of high-tech jobs, I'm sure the local people would support it, and so would I. Despite all the public money spent, most of the site here still lays empty with few civilian customers. Proof may be that throwing cash at the next big thing doesn't always work, especially in a recession. I think a white elephant is one that never gets used. Uh, this, site is, this site is being used. It, it, it is active uh, and it is delivering services for people who need it and that will continue in the future. And, and we have the capacity to accommodate more business and that business will be coming. This is still, though, an industry in its infancy with teething problems to overcome. A drone crashed next to the runway in Aberpore three years ago. There were no injuries, but it clearly spooked people living near the site. Does it fall from skies above? You know that? I do. Opera singer and music teacher Arian James lives a mile up the road. 
because you can't get rid of the noise, I can't get rid of the connection um, between the drone and its purpose in life. Okay, it's it's a killing machine. It's a spying. Um, well, they say this one won't be carrying bombs, but drones do carry bombs, and I know. I don't know. Maybe maybe this one can too. Um, but it has cameras. Um, and I don't know what happens to the film footage, who's watching, what they do with it. Uh, question mark. The questions raised in West Wales, privacy, noise, safety, are hurdles the industry itself will need to overcome. There are clearly some economic benefits to using unmanned aircraft. But first, we'll have to accept the idea of drones flying high above our heads in British skies. Now, Noel Sharkey is Professor of Robotics at the University of Sheffield and a former presenter of the TV show Robot Wars. And Kevin Warwick is Professor of Cybernetics at the University of Reading. Uh, Kevin, this, this is obviously in a way just begun. Where, mm. where do you think it could go in a few years? Well, it is an exciting commercial opportunity now. The, the sort of drones we see at the moment have big advantages when you look at human piloted vehicles. They can stay in the air for, say, 30 hours at a time, for example, but more importantly, perhaps go in places that humans can't go. So I, see, I think we're going to see things, such at the moment, in New Orleans. The possibility is there for drones to go and inspect and see where there are problems. So Because of the the, the terrible weather you the wouldn't, you wouldn't weather. put a plane That's up right. you wouldn't put a plane up there that could be dangerous to humans if a drone crashes in that scenario well it, it's not such a political problem there are no deaths I, I do think though they're going to get smaller they're, they're going to How we're going small? to see yeah. Well, I mean, if, uh, that's a good question. How small could they get it? How small the technology can go? Could even be maybe the, the size of a bee or a oh, wasp. Well, that would be the direction. Very appropriate drones as bees. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I mean, uh, presumably they were going to get cheaper and cheaper as, uh, as well, cheaper to run. Every home should have one. Yes, well, you can already buy them on Amazon for about $220. You can buy your own little drone, the AR Parrot, and fly that round and look in your neighbour's window, window or mm. whatever. So... There will be, I mean, it's going to become very available. There are lots of people using them now. There are real estate agents in the United States are using them as the drone journalism lab now. You know, so they're really getting everywhere. And there's no regulation for this. Either. Well, I was going to say, what, what are the obvious, I mean, the, the obvious problem people think about is the privacy problem. You're, yes. you're in your back garden, uh, you're, you're doing whatever you, you yeah. do in the back garden, and then somebody is filming you or recording you or having a look through your yes. bedroom window. Yes. Well, I'm, that's the thing that I'm most concerned about, really. I mean, the, you've got the trade-off between security. There's good uses for drones. You've got security, you've got very serious crime, but then you've got individual liberty and autonomy, and it's drawing that, finding a place to draw that line. I mean, I have certainly suggested to the police that really, in a debate, that we really should be looking at maybe signing drones out the way you sign out a weapon or the way you get a phone tap. Oh, so you really? see a magistrate or a judge and get it out in particular. Because what we find uh, up until now is that there's a lot of noise here with this. I hope it's not going to fly over my head. I don't trust it. <laughs> <laughs> it's heading for you. Oh, there goes the paper review. Oh, well. <laughs> Well, we tried to do the paper review later. That's but anyway, pretty good. That's pretty that was, good. Not that, badly controlled. But you see, that strikes me as another problem. If these things are flying around, and that looks like great fun, I'd love, love yeah, to play yeah, around with yeah, it, but yeah. they're going to crash. And they do crash. I mean, the, the very expensive yeah, ones crash. The predator's been crashing about 12 a year, 13 a year. Since right. Since when something's this size, of course, it doesn't matter. But if something is the, the serious military weapon systems, when they crash, it's a whole different ball game. But this is sort of halfway between a serious object and a, and a toy. Um, uh, you know, kids c potentially can build Kids of all ages, about potentially. But, Potent yeah. But what, so, so what, that what doesn't look like a very sophisticated one, actually. The police ones are, are really, you know, they're 40,000 pounds. They've got really extremely lightweight cameras that are very high resolution. Right. And they're very, very easy to fly. So you just have a little device and you twist your finger on it. So there's a privacy question. There's a civil yeah. liberties question. Yeah, but I, I mean, you know, we've, we've already got cameras and every street corner uh, yeah. just yeah. about uh, and, uh, and, and lots, so is, is lots, lots of advantages for using them it's not just people you 
you, you can monitor livestock. So for farmers, That's it's right. very useful. You can go and inspect pipelines. There's all sorts of applications which at the moment are problematic when humans are a problem. You know, right. they, they do a short space of time. But that is very, that's the very reason why we need to sort out the issues of civil liberties. I mean, before, there's before nothing wrong with drones as such, mm. as, as Kevin has pointed out. You can use them for rescue situations and everything else, but we mustn't let the PR of that distract us from, from the issues of civil liberties. But, but for like the for UK, saying, the commercial yeah. opportunities yeah. are enormous. We yeah. have a fantastic technological base in this area. We have a good industry in this area, one of the world's best. So for us in the UK, it is a fantastic commercial but then, opportunity. But then watch, watch, what, are you, what are you both saying about this? If you've different laid things, out the, I, think. Yeah, I think. slightly different things. Yeah. So you've laid out the opportunities, but in yes. terms of it should be regulated by someone. Yes. Uh, and you were saying sign it out like a police firearm. But, but that's, well, that's yeah, one way of doing it. I mean, my or problem have a, have is if I have a picnic in my, if I go out for a picnic, the drones aren't invited. I don't want strangers watching me. I'm not doing anything wrong, but I mean, I, I don't. I'm a private person. I don't want to be watched by people when I don't need to be watched. Now, when when this first came up, and five police departments in the UK, Kent, and a number of others were working with BAE Systems and the Home Office, and the Guardian used Freedom of Information to actually get transactions of the of the meetings, and they had been talking about using it for looking at smug the channel and when you saw the transactions of the meetings they were saying things in the transactions like uh, this will be a good news story rather than the big brother type story and then when you look at what the Guardian found they had a whole list of things like fly posting anti-social behavior there was a mm. really big list of crimes in not other words it's going to be a fishing expedition and, and we're on 20 seconds left not to mention you could yeah. you could stick drugs in them you wouldn't need to have human mules you could do all kinds of nasty yeah, things yeah I, I think uh, it, but it's going to be very very difficult to regulate them because Anybody can buy one, anybody can fly it around. Okay, well, thank you the both very much. The regulate the police is the point.